Hello and welcome to this video. So now we will go to the next lesson, which talks about uh, exercise adding custom business logic to our CAP application. In this particular lesson, uh, we are going to make some code changes uh, to our application uh, to add some uh, custom business logic. So what we are going to do in our application, we are going to implement conditional formatting of certain cells of your work list. So basically the priority and the impact uh, fields or the columns which we have in our risk management application, we will make some formatting changes to those particular cells. And we will make them uh, depending on the value of the property impact, the criticality column will get a special color highlighting. So this is a cosmetic change which we'll make. For that, we will add some custom business logic in our application. So for the exercise option, we will go through the live environment and uh, we will go through these steps, what we have to execute in our application. So first of all, we go to our business application studio and uh, we open our existing application, which we have created uh, till the last lesson, the risk management application. Now, in the risk management application, we create a new file called risk-service.js. So this file will be created inside the SRV folder. So here we already have an existing uh, CDS file, which is risk-service.cds, which basically defines our uh, service, our OData service. And uh, this will be the implementing JavaScript file for our uh, CDS file. So we have to create this file name with the same name. So you can see that risk-service.cds and risk-service.js. So that is how these two files are connected. And that is how CAP framework understands that this JavaScript implementation file is an implementation for this particular um, Odata service or this particular CAP service CDS file. So we create this file risk-service.js. And uh, this is the code snippet which we use. This is the code snippet which we put in here in our JavaScript implementation file. So what this code snippet is doing is that it basically registers a handler for our risks entity. Okay, so here we have defined this constant and this basically uh, defines the con constants for our entities. So for the risks entity, we, def we implement a handler here. So after read, so when the risks entity is read, this handler will be triggered. It is mentioned here, this handler will be executed directly after a read operation on a risks entity. What this will do is that it will loop through all the data uh, for the risks entity and uh, based on the impact value, whether if it is greater than uh, some 100,000, it will assign a criticality value to it accordingly. And uh, it will also set criticality for priority. So this is just a custom code, which basically modifies the criticality property for our uh, impact and our risk. So this is the code which we have just uh, pasted from this particular sample. Now what we will do, we will open the page map in our SAP Fury Elements application and we will make the UI related changes in our uh, CAP application. So we go to the SAP Fury tools and we open the map, the page map here. So in the page map, first we will edit the list report. Now in the list report under the columns, we have to choose the priority column and we have to update the corresponding annotations. So here we go to the columns and we select the priority column and the annotations which we have to change in our priority column. So first is text. This text we set it to prior slash description. So that would be the text value shown in our priority column now. So we have already made that change and uh, text arrangement will be text only and criticality value will be prior criticality. So text arrangement text only and uh, criticality will be prior criticality. Similarly, we next we update the annotations on the impact column and on the impact column, we update the criticality annotation from here. So we go to the impact column and uh, the criticality annotation, we update it to the criticality value. 
now we will make changes uh, on the object page so we go back to the page map and we edit the object page on the object page we set criticality annotation for the priority field so subsections risk overview subsections uh, risk details on fields so priority for the priority field we set the criticality annotation to prio criticality so criticality annotation we updated to prio criticality and then we go to the impact field so we select the impact field and here again for criticality we select the criticality value for the criticality annotation so this is done once these changes are done in your application you can just execute cds watch command if it is not already running in your cap application so now your application is running on local port So here we can see that the priority and the impact columns, their uh, look and feel has been changed uh, as per the annotations we have set in the page map. And if we select a particular row in the object page also, we can see that the impact and the priority uh, field values uh, have been modified as per the annotations we have set. So this is what we can see here in the sample also. So that is what we have done. We have added some custom code, custom business logic to our CAP application. Now we'll move on to the next lesson and we will go through and attempt the quiz. So question number one, what can you do to provide meaningful error messages to users in your CAP application? So the answer will be register an error handler. Why does CAP set the file riskservice.js automatically as a handler file for the respective service? Because SAP Business Application Studio added a respective annotation, no. The answer is because the file name and the service definition file name are the same. In CAP, which keyword is used to send events? To send events, emit keyword is used. How many event handlers can you register for one event phase? So you can register multiple event handler for one event phase. Which of the following applies to custom event handlers? So multiple event handlers can be registered for the same event. Registered custom handlers can add domain logic to application. This is again, this is correct. And single handler can be registered for multiple events. Yes, this is also correct. Now, why does CAP set the file risk hyphen service.js automatically as a handler file for the respective service? Because the file name and the service definition file name are the same. Which pattern do you use to register an event handler? So SRV dot, this is the pattern we use to register an event handler. Which criticality value is assigned to negative criticality? So in our case, it was three. In Node.js, which statement do you use to create an exception? So we use a throw statement. Which are the service APIs for custom logic? For custom logic, logic we have event handling. So we'll submit the answers. Okay, incorrect number of selections. Okay, which are the service APIs for custom logic? There are three correct answers. So event handling, querying API and messaging API. Okay, so for this particular uh, question, the criticality values assigned to negative criticality, it is one. So this is as per the example which we executed in the last lesson. So we submit the answers again and we see that all the answers are correct. So with this, we finish this particular unit. In the next video, we'll start a new unit, which is consuming external services. Thank you.